under with diffusion, we can classify them in different ways. Okay. One way to classify diffusion is by the so-called uniformity of concentration. Concentration we all know means quite often within certain volume how much of a stuff or um, substance there is or a species or an ion. The uniformity of the concentration based on that we can classify diffusion. One type is called interdiffusion, which means there will be so-called microscopic concentration gradient, which means within the bulk of the material, certain location the concentration would be higher, while some other con location the concentration would be lower. And the location, the high concentration region and the low concentration region are separated by microscopic distance, for example, at least microns or even millimeters. Okay. In comparison to interdiffusion, where we have so-called concentration gradient, even without concentration gradient, even the material concentration is completely uniform, completely uniform. That will be so-called self-diffusion. The microscopic species, the atoms, the molecules may still move in a random fashion from one location to an another location to achieve so-called mass transport. This is so-called self-diffusion. It occurs when there is no concentration gradient. Okay. And quite often in material science, we are more talking about interdiffusion when there is concentration gradient. But self-diffusion uh, also happens all the time, as we will explain later. Okay. Classification of, of diffusion can also be based on the direction of diffusion with respect to concentration. This is for interdiffusion, okay? There can be so-called downhill diffusion. Downhill means goes from high concentration to low concentration. The microscopic species, for example, atoms or molecules are moving from the region when where they have high concentration to regions where they have lower concentrations. This is called downhill diffusion. In comparison, there will be so-called uphill diffusion, which means the atoms or species, believe it or not, would actually move randomly, but eventually from low concentration region to high concentration region. And between downhill diffusion and uphill diffusion, the downhill diffusion is more common, more prevalent. And it will be the greater focus for this class. And, but on the other hand, we will also talk about uphill diffusion. The diffusion can also be classified by the route or we say pathways of diffusion. Okay. The diffusion may occur so-called within the bulk of the material, within a big grain of the material, which means the atoms or molecules occur within the bulk of the material, within the grain, if it's crystalline or within the glassy phase. It may also occur along the material surface, which is the boundary between within the material and the vacuum or gas atmosphere. The diffusion can also occur along the surface. The atoms or species move along the surface to achieve mass transport. The diffusion can also occur along other defects within the bulk material. Other defects, for example, with the, it may occur along certain interfaces such as green boundaries. We have the same material, for example, silicon, but there may be one silicon green, another sili silicon green. Between them, there is the so-called green boundary or GB. Well, Adam's arrangement got messed up a little bit, which we will talk about, but the species, atoms, or molecules or ions may move along green boundaries to achieve mass transport. Okay, this is another pathway. 
the diffusion may also occur along dislocations. Hopefully you are familiar with dislocation, which is so-called a linear or one-dimensional defects within crystalline material. That is edge dislocation, screw dislocation, or other mixed dislocation. But diffusion, the atoms or ions or other species may move along the this linear or one-dimensional defects called dislocation to achieve again mass transport by magnetism we can also classify diffusion which is also you can call it a pathway there is so-called a substitutional diffusion for example the diffusion between copper and nickel the copper atom and nickel atom are similar in size but when they diffuse into each other, when they kind of mix into each other in the solid state, these type of diffusion we call substitutional diffusion. We'll explain this concept more. In comparison, there may also be so-called interstitial diffusion. Interstitial diffusion. We know for crystalline material, the host atoms can be treated as so-called hard spheres. The atoms touch each other, they behave like a hard sphere, like a ball, hard ball. But between balls, there will be so-called opening or interstitial sides. And on those interstitial sides, for example, a smaller atom, such as hydrogen atoms within silicon, or carbon atoms within pure ions or pure nickel, those hydrogen atoms or carbon atoms would be much smaller than the host silicon or nickel atoms and they would diffuse or move in a random fashion from interstitial to another neighboring interstitial sites and that types of mass transport by diffusion is called interstitial diffusion. Okay, this is another way to classify diffusion by magnetism. Okay, we'll talk about these uh, in de greater detail later. Okay.